Yo, what up? It's your boy Wiz Dakota. You're now tuned in to the Overall Drip Experience Podcast. We here live. Stay tuned, man. We here. It's Bastion Drip, the flyest in the city, aka the young intellectual. And today we got Wiz Dakota on the What's podcast. Going on, What's going yeah, on, man. brother? What up, man? You making noise, bro? <laughs> we hear you. Lauren, stand up, 978. 978, man, we here. So, I just want to start off with the name Wiz Dakota. This is how I like to start off. What does um, it mean, bro? Tell us tell us the meaning behind it. It's a little story. Um, Talk to me. Before I was called Lex the Wiz, the wizard. Everybody called me a wizard because I was like 12 years old making beats. 12 years old making beats. And Copy. I was just, I grew up with just older rappers and they were just like, yo, this kid's a wizard, this kid's a wizard. Oh, so, so you were nice, nice. So everybody, <laughs> everybody just called me Lex the Wiz, Lex the Wizard. And, but then when I started like really tapping into it, like, um, I didn't like the name Lex. Lex is like my real name, so like everybody calls me Lex. So everybody, like the Lexus? No, just Lex. So oh, Lex. L-E-X-X. -X. Copy. Um, it's still uh, my Twitter name is Lex the Wiz, but um, yeah, just I switched it. I kept Wiz because mm -hmm. it's Wizard. Wizard is like I fuck with it wizard, though. But Dakota stands for it's C O D A. That's um a term in music, music theory. Like oh, like a term copy, in music theory is called Dakota. It's, it stands for like a like a small movement or something. Mm -hmm. like, and I just like switched it up to put a Dakota. Dakota, okay, all right. Just do so some Da Vinci Code shit. It was just wordplay, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you, I feel you. That's but crazy. Yeah, nobody really knows that story, I just gave it to you guys. <laughs> I mean, that's something new, that's something new for the, for the city. Yeah, man. Take us back to your childhood, bro. I know you're big now. Well, you city I'm big. Not, I'm not big. You know, man. you're not big. I know. You don't gotta be humble, bro. I'm like I said big, last man. time, it's the Overall Drip Experience podcast. But take us back to your childhood, bro. Like, who were you, bro? Like, um, like, before you answer the question, bro, I want you to tell us, like, how did this whole music thing start? Oh, I was born into it. My father's you were musician. Born into it. Your father's a musician. Yeah, he was a merengue singer. He still is. Just, merengue singer. Merengue singer. Shout producer. him out real quick. Richie La Banda Eki. Shout out Richie La Banda Hendi. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also uh, he's a radio host also here. Oh, in, what? in La Mega. Um, yeah, I just I was like. I was that kid because my brother was like into cartoons mm -hmm. and video games, but I didn't like that. Like I Same used to. Here. My mom to my mom tells me now like yo, they, I used to cry if my father didn't take me to the studio. What? And like, but this is like he used to be in the studios like in New York and shit. Like he wasn't even here, so I used to be just crying. And then my dad would just end up just taking me and be like, yo, come on. And I just sit there and I just sit there. For Are you hours, serious? Just sit there for hours just watching. I remember that shit. My mom tells me. I didn't remember it till my mom told me. I was just like, damn, I really was that kid just in the studio just sitting there. Doing that's that. dope, though. That's dope. So when was you like, so what was your like big break? Like, so you were a little kid. You were making music. Like, when did you start seeing a little bit of noise? Musically, I started seeing noise. Um, What age? Like, let's give us like, like a little age range. I was like 14. Um, At 14, you? Yeah, I was making wow. like dance halls. Dance hall, like, that's when dance halls, like, at his peak, cause Lawrence. You know Lawrence is dancing crazy. City. Shout out knowledge. Yeah, shout out knowledge. <laughs> knowledge was one of the first ones to see okay, me back five. then. Um, yeah, I just started making reggae back in the day. I used to just do hooks, though. I used to just do hooks for people. You just did hooks, you did. Yeah, they used to get any rhythm. We get the instrumental, I drop a hook on it, and then whatever rapper was in the studio, they hopped on it. Like it was like that for like till I was like. 17, 18. So you made hooks and then any rapper would just jump on your hooks? Uh, yeah, and I was uh, I was a producer at first before everything. So I was just always making beats for it. Because we have a studio and then my brother was the engineer. So mm -hmm. every rapper that came here, I would just gave him beats. Yo, here's beats. I'd be upstairs making beats and everybody downstairs hmm. recording. And then, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, bro, to be honest. So like, I want... I want you to give us the age where you actually started. Like, when did you actually start like making messing beats. with the beats? I was 11 years old. 11 years old making exactly beats. 11 years old. So you were around your dad the whole time my, with the music. My uncle put me on. I was 11. My uncle used to make reggaeton beats. Okay. He, he lives in Miami. Okay. He came to my house one time with Fruity Loops. That shit is difficult, bro. And I was just like, what the hell is that? It's hard, right? Yeah, and then I told my brother, because my brother was the smart one, he used to just download shit and I'd be like, yo, get Fruity Loops. <laughs> and from there, forget about it, just clicking. 
I don't know what I was making. I don't remember my first beat. That shit is tough. But I was like yeah, 11 years old. That's why when he, people used to call me Lex, Lex the Wiz, mm -hmm. I used to be like, yo, just lie about my age or something. Like, Are you serious? Yeah, because my boy Buggy, I don't know if he's going to watch this. My shout boy out Buggy. Buggy. Shout out Buggy Lele. <laughs> um, he had a bar. I still remember this bar. He's like 13-year-old Wiz by the name mm -hmm. of Lex producing my beats. And I was like, he had like, he was saying like 11 year old. I was like, nigga, lie about my age, bro. I'm too young for this rap shit. What? Lie about my age. And then I mean, like, that gives you more clout, though, don't you think so? No, you're younger? I, I, when I was young, you know, when you're yeah, young, yeah, you, you want to be older, old. You know facts, facts, so facts. Like, I was just like, yo, lie about my age, do something. I don't want to be 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. So right now, we're 14 years old. You're making a little bit of noise. What are you actually doing, though? You're in high school? You're in, you're in, uh, in middle I, school? What are you? Eighth grade, probably, eighth grade, ninth grade. Um, we used to mm -hmm. do a lot of under 21 parties. Like in the city? Yeah, yeah. We used, um, when Vivid was there, it's not there no more, but Vivid was on Essex Street. Mm. We did a lot of under 21s at Galaxia. It's not even there no more. It used to be Reels. Copy. Um, yeah, it used to do man under 21 jams. Oh, so you were like... I mean, I'm not going to give him no clout, but I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. So you were just out here just making moves? I was just... just get it. Grind and MySpace became big. Oh, MySpace was lit. And MySpace, I say, I used to, I did my music page, it just drop. It was dance halls, so I used to just drop dance halls. Any rhythm that came out, I hopped on it. You hopped on it, and yeah, you were just there. Off rip. And I used to give it to all the DJs. Yo, play and they fucked with you already. Yeah. My brother used to record them doing the mixes. Ah. My brother was like the main engineer in this whole city. Copy. And yeah. So you're 14, okay, so take us into high school. What are you doing in high school? I'm doing music. Bro, you gotta, um, bro, you gotta give us a timeline, bro. <laughs> high school, I mean, I dropped out of high school. So you dropped out of high school? Yeah, like my first freshman year. I'm you weren't fucking with it. Oh, yeah. Why? I Talk just, to me. I used, to, I used to skip school just to go to the studio. Oh, so the, just music was just something yeah, that was Yeah, it was just, just music. It was just music. Um, I, I know I was 16, I, I worked at Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut was my first job. Copy. My first and last real job. <laughs> um, I just literally, oh, I had another job when I was 18. But I just did everything, everything with music. And once I started making music, I never stopped making music to this day. Damn. I'm like 15 years plus making music. That's crazy. He's basically a veteran. That's insane, bro. I definitely did my 10,000 hours. For sure. In like a month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're past high school, whatever. So you didn't go to college, dropped out of high yeah, school. No, I dropped out of high. I dropped out of high school. Well, I didn't even think about college, to be honest. You're like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go. My mom's gonna hate this, but yeah. I did. <laughs> Shout out to Wizard's mom. Come on the podcast. Yeah, facts. She's gonna be like, yo, she was on my ass. Yo, go to school, go to school. Go to sc get, bro, a job, like every, get a job, get a job. Like every Caribbean parent, though. Yeah, yeah, facts. And she, um, this goes into that. Like, I was 16, 17, mm -hmm. not in school, no job, just making music. And then, like. But did, but did your parents or did your mother see? Did my, she see it? My father saw it. Your father my father it. understood it. Mm -hmm. My mom know that you know I was talented and she know that music is what I want to do. But mm -hmm. she was just like, damn, another musician in the family. Yeah. But not not like not like what disappointing. Do you mean? That's a good thing. Not disappointing, but she was you know, every every parent wants like your, your kid, kid to go to like school. A lawyer, like a doctor. I wasn't with hmm. that. I was hell no. So my next question is my next question is the hate. You're from an inner city like I am. Everybody already knows about it, bro. It's it's not nothing that's a mystery. Honestly, um, who was hating, bro? Not who was hating, but how was the hate towards you? Honestly, I don't get that much hate that I know of. I, oh, I I see the love more than hate. That's, I get so that's much. That's rare, bro. I'm super like you know. I appreciate all that shit. Blessed, but like. I get so much love now that I feel like it's hate. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's it fake. Yeah, like I feel like people be like, "Damn, you're doing your thing." But like back in the head, they're like, "Damn, man." I wish that was me. Yeah, like I, I feel like it's like that, <laughs> but like I could be wrong. But I really get a lot of love and like. Yeah, like, now but I'm talking about back then when you back started. Then, because right now, bro, you're like you know you're doing your thing, bro. So people are gonna come up to you and tell you certain things. Yeah. But it's like back then when you were coming up, bro. The people that didn't believe in your dream. I mean, yeah, a lot of people... There was a lot of people hating. There's no way. Yeah, like, yeah. nobody is coming up, climbing up, like, climbing the ladder, and there's people like, yo, bro, you got this. No, they're just trying to bring you down. I know a lot of people that I started me making music. I feel like they hate me. And not, you surpassed them, not, right? Not that they hate me, but I, I didn't surpass. I outworked them. You know? Outworked them. They stopped. They, you know, niggas had to... Life 
Life hit him, you know? Life hit him, yeah. And I was, I just never stopped making music. You just never stopped, exactly. Literally never stopped making music at all. $20,000. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm probably like, yeah, $500,000. But now, like, you see, like, you see the difference now once you're established. Yeah. People see, it's 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 all about consistency, though, because people see no, it. It sounds corny, but that's that's literally a fact. Bro, it's, it's consistency, all about consistency, bro. I've been doing this for about literally a year, bro. It's like, yeah. now people are starting to notice, but the first year, people are like, yo, what is this kid doing? Like, people will ask me, like, yo, what advice? I'll be like, yo, just keep doing Keep going, that's bro. Like, that's, bro. That's literally the key for everything. Just talk to the going, camera, bro. Man. Talk to the people. Hey, man, just keep going, man. Keep don't going, stop. bro. Don't keep ever stop. Going. Whatever you're doing, don't stop. But that's really what it is, bro. And if you see a little ounce, bro, a gram of talent, a gram of natural ability, bro, don't stop. No. Bro, the thing is that, bro, people lurk, but they don't want to work. I'm going to say no, this one more time. Damn, say that again, bro. <laughs> they lurk, but they don't want to work. And what I mean by that is people are always looking, bro. Like, especially, I feel like in inner cities, bro, they're always looking. You'd but be surprised who's paying attention. Yeah, you you would be surprised. Like how this came about is just crazy. Yeah. I didn't even I didn't even know you seen the interview. Not facts. I watch everything that happens in the city. Everything. Oh everything, damn. Everything, everything. So you know about the drip drive then? I know about everything bro. <laughs> nah but I was surprised you even because I know you you're doing your thing or whatever so I was like I'm just starting off so I didn't even I didn't even think you'd see it. But um bro a lot of people bro they're bitter because people outwork them just like you said earlier. And that shit is just crazy to me. Like how are you mad at somebody for working harder than you? I don't understand that. Kick yourself on the ass. I don't think I'll never understand that. People just need to be disciplined and just stay Keep focused. Keep going, bro. Man. Stay consistent. Don't, don't worry about who's tweeting this, who's posting this. Like, bro. Sharpen your sword, man. Keep it going. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's literally that shit, man. What I want to know is, though, I'm just going to jump into the, the features. Let's get it. And I'm going to backtrack into something else. But I'm going to jump into the features. Your first major feature. Who was it? Damn. First major Pro one. Production like, wise? You can start off with whatever you I want. I used to, I, I made beats for mad people back then. I Your mean, first major though, like yeah, the one that like, put you on like scale. I mean, the one put me out of this big was um, definitely Tory Lanez. But Shout worked, out Tory. I've worked with a lot of famous artists before that, but Tory Lanez was like mine. Like it was under the Wiz Dakota brand. So Copy. it was like really. You have a label as well? No, I have, I have like just like the brand, Wiz Dakota, Coda Dakota, World. Dakota, Coda World. You know, Copy. but like I, that was like the real first like big thing. So I mean, I had like I had the Wednesday track and all that shit. That's what really blew that me. That Wednesday went crazy. That track That's what was really crazy. Blew me, but like, Toy Lanes was like my first big feature, crazy. you could say, and that was like a wild experience. That was on Coda World, right? Um, Wednesday. Wednesday was on Coda World. Coda World. Bring us back to Coda World. I mean, what, what, what was like, what was going through your mind, bro? Like when you <laughs> made, when you made those hits, bro. Nah, no boss, yeah. you got hits. I'm gonna keep it a stack, bro, cause I, I still be bumping that shit till this day. And that was in what 2018? Nah, that was actually uh, 2016. Coda World? Mm -hmm. 2016. When I dropped Wednesday, well, I dropped Wednesday like December 2015, like January. December 20. Like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But well, um, bring us back to that time, though. I had a thing going on called Wiz Wednesdays. Wiz Wednesdays, I remember that. I dropped a song every Wednesday for like a year or something. Consistent. Almost two years. Just two, every Wednesday a song came out. And I literally did Wednesday, just, I literally did it on that Wednesday I released it. I'm like, yo, I gotta make a song. It's Wednesday, I gotta that make a song, song. That song, bro, that song was crazy. They put it in SoundCloud mixes. Nah, they, they put it, it everywhere. in that dance hall that was the first. That was the first record that I had like over 100,000 plays for me. Over 100K. On SoundCloud. Wow. That was that was fucking crazy. I was not expecting that. And the craziest part is you're a restaurant owner, correct? Yes. What's the name of your restaurant? It's called Wild Grill. Wild, Wild Grill. Barn Grill. Bro, this guy <laughs> single handedly made Lawrence lit. On, on what Wednesday, day is it? On Wednesday. On Wednesday. <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> Bro, who parties on a Wednesday? I'm sleeping, bro. I gotta go to work tomorrow. This is no, my every, work. This is my job, though. Everybody said that. Yo, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Then, like, you see them, like, 10 o'clock just Bro, twisting. smack. Bro, they hit me up. They're like, yo, bro, you pull up to Wow Wow. I talked to you the other day. You're like, yo, um, whatever. Um, Wow is da da da. Yo, yo, my freaking, my bar is gonna be open. I was like, mm -hmm. I didn't even know you had a bar, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. You could get the Wizard Readers. Every Wednesday, readers, every Wednesday, five bucks, five bucks, five dollars. That's crazy though. But how is that going for you? 
It's going I, amazing, man. I get to like connect with those people that I really follow. You get to and, connect with the city. Yeah, like everybody like literally talks to me. They be like, "Yo, I never expect you to be like this." An friendly. entrepreneur, yeah. I'm like, "Yo, the hell, I'm a regular person, man. I just make music. That's it." Yeah, but people be hating, bro. Some people be hating. Some people be showing love. Yeah. But like, do you go there every Wednesday? Yeah. Like you're there every I have Wednesday. To. You have to be there every yeah. Wednesday. I mean, unless I'm on tour or something, I'm out. But. Yeah, that's that's the place. That's the place to pay the bills, man. Copy. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit back to Tory Lanez. How did that come about? We need to know. Um, the people need to know. It started off with my man's. My man's Tommy. He had the sneaker shit. Tommy Tuesday. Yes, he had the Copy. sneaker thing. He was he was with Tory Lanez literally all day that day. And it was like 3 in the morning. I was ready to go to sleep. He was with Tory Lanez? Yeah, all day. He was with him all day. Copy. And, um... Yeah, it was like 3 in the morning. I was not all ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then he calls me like, yo, Tori wants to be on the record right now. Let's go. I'm like, what? I was like, I was like where are you? He's like, yo, they're in front of House of Blues. In and Boston? Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, shit, we out. I, I called my manager and we fucking did like 150 on the highway. We met him up and then it was, how it was history since then. How long did it take for you to... Um, I had the sauce record already. I had original version, but I did a, I, I had an open verse, and I'm like, yo, and I sold him records. I sold Tory Lanez mad records, but then I played that sauce, and he was just like, yo, that's I mean, the genre. Get right on that one, and um, yeah, he was in the tour bus. He did it in his tour bus. It was history since then. But all right, tell me how you felt. Don't tell me how he um, lived. Just tell me how you felt. How'd you really feel? I mean, honestly, I, I didn't feel nothing. Oh, which is like a regular person. Yeah, because I was just like, a lot of people ask me on the tour, but I was like, yo, how you feel? You got a record with a big artist. Big and artist, yeah. And I'm just like, bro, I'm going back to my mom's house. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nothing's not changing right now. So, like. Hey, but like, you had to feel something. No, I was, I, was, I was just soaking up, like, the experience, you know, like. You trying head, to live in the moment. In my head, I was like, "Damn, I want this to be my tour bus." I was like, "Y'all would have had speakers like here." Yeah, yeah, the whole time, I was just looking at tour bus like that. You were envisioning like yeah, I was like it I, being I, I could I could live this life, you know. So and yeah, we were bouncing back ideas and helped on. He recorded. He did that shit like in five minutes. So I was just like that. Five minutes. And he records himself. I was just like that. It's like me, like. Oh, so y'all similar? Yeah, like I was just like I never watched a person do what I do. Cobb. And he he was doing it. I was just like. Man, this is like looking in the mirror, man. This is weird. But it was cool, I see up next, bro. It was it was amazing, man. I met a lot of I did a lot of networking at the moment. And then um like literally two like I forgot when it, I forgot what oh no, it was like August when that oh it wasn't August. It was like mm -hmm. it was like June ish. I don't know. I don't know when Tori's birthday, but he posted a song on his birthday. Oh wow. I didn't know that shit and I was just I knocked out, my manager called me, he's like, Bro, look at your Instagram. I'm like went crazy. And I go there, I see like a thousand followers, and he's just there. He's just driving his his fucking McLaren bumper sauce. So I'm like, so he's so he's humble then. And I was like, I didn't even ask for this. He did it off three. I was like, oh, this is good. This guy's true. So he, so he's humble. And I super humble. I thought he was a dickhead, but he was he's super humble, man. Super super duper humble. He's like, yo, I'm available this date. What's up? I thought I felt like he was trying me. He's like, yo, I'm available this day. You want to shoot the video? I was like, like uh, hell yeah. I called my director. We all left to Miami. We shot the video and everything. Bro, there's no way you weren't low key in your head fanning out, bro. There's no way. It's impossible. Um, it's, it, it's literally nobody's that that fucking. You feel me? Like there's nah, no way, honestly, bro. Honestly, you can ask my whole team. They bro, be, I'm fanning out right now, bro. They be like, <laughs> they be like, yo, Wiz, like. You know, happy. I was like, you know, of course I'm happy, but you know, I, I, this is what I signed up for. You know, like this is what I wanted. You gotta be ready. Yeah, I was just mentally just be like, you know, I don't want to act like a fool in front of everybody. No, obviously, but like I just want to ask you how you felt. But I no, feel no, you. I was, I was happy, super happy. I was just like, yo, this is fire. I want to do this every day. Every day, right? Yeah. I hear that. I hear What's that. I hear that. that. That's fucking dope, bro. Did you meet anybody off of him though? Like off of that track? Did you meet anybody like? Um, I got close with um Zoe Dollars. Zoe Dollars. Yeah, I got real close to him. I still I talk Shout to Zoe Dollars. I him. talk to him every day Shout to this day. Every day? Yeah. He, oh. came, he came out here to Lawrence. I had him in Lawrence for like a week. He was just chilling here. What? Mm hmm And you posted that, or you just kept nah, that to yourself? Um, we posted it a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just low key shit. We were just working in the studio. It was going in. 
And ever since then, we just been like bonding. That's like my real friend. Like he's a cool dude. He's man. from Florida, right? Yeah. He's from Shout out to the Zoes of Florida. Yeah, man. He's he's he was there at the video shoot. That's how I met him. And like ever since. Ah, he's dope. He's real dope. Yeah, hell yeah. We have mad music coming out. I have like. Excited, bro. Yeah, can we post it? Yeah, we got we got like a whole tape together, basically. A whole tape. Mm-hmm. Estimated time that's dropping. You gotta I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. We have we just making music and then we're just making mad music. Yeah. When, whenever we feel like oh, okay, then we'll drop it. Copy, copy, copy. Yeah. And in the meantime, all that's going on, I met Roddy Rich. Okay. We did the record with Roddy Rich when I came back from man. I was just about to ask that. Yeah, crazy. yeah, and um. I forgot how that shit happened. Nah, you gotta tell us how it happened, bro. <laughs> you better remember. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, yeah. We, we we were just chilling. They were like, yo, he's in he's in this studio, whatever. We was like, yo, the shoot out there, man. We're going in there, and then we did. Studio um, where? Give us more context. Studio where? Like, where were you where, at, bro? I know what date was my it? My boy shows studio. I live in Waymouth, something like that. It was far. Waymouth. It was far. Fuck. Copy, but like, was it like what year was it? Uh, 2018, I think. 2018. Yeah, that's when we did the first two records. We did for show and um off the strength. And um I have another record that's he recorded in Lawrence. He was in Lawrence, and he mm. did those records. Um, like 2019, like mid 2019. But yeah, I met him. He's a cool dude. Who'd nice. you like? Who'd you like working with more? I like working with both, both of them. Both of them. Ah, I hear that. <laughs> Roddy right, right Rich records himself too and everything. He knows. He does how, the same thing. Yeah, he knows how to. He taught me a little tricks on Pro Tools and everything. He's like, yo, you should do this, this, this. I'm like, oh, this is fire. I didn't know he. But yeah, we were just chilling. He came to the Lions. He was in Lions. He had a show like in Connecticut, so he pulled up to Lions before the show. And we're just chilling. We made music. That's fucking dope, bro. Yeah. yeah. I had a, now he's like the number one artist in the world. Right, his man. album went crazy. He's literally the number one artist in the world, and he was just chilling in lines. <laughs> <laughs> do you still do you still talk to him to this day? Uh yeah, yeah. talk to his team and all that shit. But like you know, he's literally the number one artist in the world, so he's nice. he's on his own right now. He's running he's this. running the streets right now. Yeah, um, I mean, I met a lot of people after I dropped the records. A lot of people mm -hmm. hit me up like, "Yo, who the hell are you?" Like exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was good, man. It's, it's been a good ride so far. You're enjoying it. You're just letting yeah, yeah. it soak in. I just want, I want more placements. I want everything now. It, and it makes me more hungry now. Exactly. And you're a business owner too, so mm -hmm. it's like you got a whole bunch of shit going on. Yes. I'm kind of like you. Like I like to stay busy. You feel me? Like I don't like not doing anything. I hate like I hate, you hate not doing anything, right? Like I hate being home. I like being productive. Like I like doing something, like bro. Moving, it's like, moving, moving. bro, if you can leave the audience, leave them with something, bro. Like with some advice, if you can leave them with something, what would you tell them? Um, man, just find what you really love. Like, find what, find like what Steve Harvey says. I, I he's like, yo, like, like find. I, I don't know if he said the gift or the passion, but like, mm -hmm. find what, what you do good with, mm -hmm. with no effort, and like you know perfect. What you that. do naturally. Yeah, like what you do like, with no effort, you do it so good. Do just, it naturally. Yep. Just you know, stay focused on that. Like, and do that shit from the heart. And never stop. And who cares what this person says? Like fuck everybody. Just do whatever you do. Hmm. Stay focused, man. Stay down. Copy. This is a question I like to ask all my guests, bro. I'm pretty sure you've seen this in the other episodes. <laughs> you probably geared up for this question. But what was your greatest failure? And when I ask this question again, I, I heard the question. <laughs> you heard this? But I forgot like what you mean by that. That's all like, right, so like your biggest L, but like. Your greatest, all right, so your greatest failure lesson, like, is your greatest lesson. lesson. So you're, the biggest L that you learned from, that you still use to this day, when you think back to it, you're like, damn, this is this is something that taught me a lot. And you're never going to like forget it, and that's what you use to move on, to move forward. Um, basically, just be more um, more outspoken. I'm like a super like, introvert. Like, introvert. I, I don't want to talk to nobody. Like, but, no, just be more open. I've been practicing that like all 2019 and now just like talking to people oh so you're introverted yeah i'm not, like i'm super anti-social like uh -huh. but I'm, I'm chilling like i'm a chill dude but i just i'd rather just stay shut than talk like i feel you like unless like somebody talks to me then i'll talk speak bro. when spoken to yeah yeah like that's how i was raised so like 
but like my biggest L, my biggest lesson is just learning to, experience. Yeah, that's to because like I've been in situations. Mm -hmm. I've been in a lot of like crazy studio sessions and, and, you, and you didn't I say never nothing. spoke. I never spoke, and then the people are like, bro, you should have told him you did music. Like, yeah, like that's like um, you know, but you know, I'm working. I make my music speak for myself. So. Facts, bro. Like with your music, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really consider you an introvert. Cause that's all the what tracks, I, that, yeah, no, extrovert. That, that's what I'm saying. Like it's weird. That's like your outlet, but, right? But like I'm only. Like if I'm in the studio, I'm a whole different person. You see me working, I'm a whole different person. But like if I'm just like out in public, I just Let's be cool and chill it, man. It's like, cause like I don't know, man. You never know what people's intentions are. I feel you, but it's like I don't know. I feel you, but it's like you just never know. Like you could talk to somebody that might change your life. You that's could talk to somebody that, that, that might. That's what I learned. That's like you never know who who you talk to. Like, exactly, it could be the person that changed my life right there. That's exactly. why I rather that now I'm more like yo what's so up, man I'm Wiz. I don't like telling people I make music though. Copy. Nah, but nah, but your music speaks for itself. I'm pretty sure people in the city know your music, bro. Nah, like people here, you know, I go around and people know who I am. But like, if you don't know who I am, I'm never gonna tell you I make music. Copy. I I rather you like later on like, yo, I met that kid, yo. He he makes music, yo. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that, right? I rather I rather that. I feel like that's more of a. It gives more of an impact and it's more organic. Copy. Instead of like, yeah, I make music, like, yo, check the link in my bio. <laughs> like, I'm all set with that. <laughs> I, I, feel you, I feel you, I feel you. Do you plan on doing anything for the city, bro? Hell yeah, man. Lawrence, bro. There's a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of people coming up. A whole bunch of things going on. You have any, any plans for the city? I want to I wanna just get, like, anybody who really makes music, who really cares about music, not to go viral tomorrow like i want yeah. i want to get gather, and mentor them i want to gather the people that really care about music and just like talk to the audience bro <laughs> no man soon when i'm on a good platform enough to make something happen for the city that's what i want to do i want to like make them make the real musicians make them you know fly Flourish. you know make them the I people that they deserve what they need to do i want to be that person that helps them, them that, out that'll give them that alley you you know what i'm saying that. And I want like I want people to, I want to gather like I don't want to say like a class but like you know gather people and like while I make music have them like watch me ask me questions yeah like because like, I I can't teach but if you're there and you ask questions I could answer that for you but I can't be like all right uh, this is how you make a beat I can't do that but I want to soon teach the youth like how music lives forever man teach the youth hell yeah coffee. So you got a new project coming out. I got a lot of stuff coming out. But there's a project you just dropped. Yes. Yeah, talk about that, bro. <laughs> I dropped um Automatic. It's like the official album. I dropped the Automatic, like a five track EP. Copy. It's on SoundCloud only, and I dropped this one everywhere. It's in your bio? Yeah, it's in my bio. Links in the bio, tune in, you heard? It's called Automatic. Um, yeah, it's um, it's like my R and B side of everything. It's like my real songwriting side. Copy. So you get like, it deep. Yeah, yeah. It's like, for the shorties. It's, yeah, man. It's for the shorties. For anybody, <laughs> it's music to ride to. Yeah. You know, everything. It's a, it's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful project. All written, produced, mixed, and mastered, everything by me. But what's the thought process behind it, though? Um. Like what was the inspiration? That's the, that's autumn, the literally. I feel like when it's autumn and when it's fall, it's you feel like different. I feel like that's when the best music comes out. That's when Copy. the best music be made. The weather, the leaves. I'm a September. I'm a Libra. Oh, coffee. So like, nah, I know you said it when you track. Everything, everything about fall, I love, man. So I don't know. I feel like that 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 gets me in a different mode. So when I when it's fall, I start making some. Puts you in records. your element. Yeah, yeah. So. And like I know a lot of people really love the first EP. Um, they were just like, "Yo, we need a part two. We need a part two. Copy. And then once I tweeted like a little thing, like, "Oh, I'm making part two and then you know, everybody was going crazy. Going crazy. Everybody's like, "What? Are you ready? Drop it now!" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, I haven't even finished it." But um, yeah, it has um a record off the strength is um with Roddy Rich. That's a it's oh. a hidden gem. Man. You gotta listen to the whole album to find it. But um, yeah, automatic man, go download that. It's the hottest album in Massachusetts. Link in his bio. Facts. All, all by me, written, mixed produced. and mastered, everything you produced, do everything. recorded. The art cover was me and my brother. My brother's a graphic designer. Copy. 
Oh, what? And um, yeah, I did everything. There's nothing there that somebody else made. There's nothing there that somebody else made. You own all the rights to all your everything. shit. I own everything. All my masters, everything. That's dope, bro. I'm blessed, man. Next question is, bro, who, when you sit back, bro, and you're in your room at night, or you're just cooling in your whip, who's your biggest inspiration? Like, what's the drive that keeps you going? Besides your father, besides the immediate um, inspirations, who inspires you to keep going, bro? To keep going? Who inspires me? Or just who inspires you to start and to keep going? I have so much inspiration, bro. It's like... Who's your biggest? Biggest influence? Musically? Or just overall? I mean, doesn't it tie into both? Okay, I, I could get inspired musically. I could get inspired musically by just hearing something, so I don't know. No, but, but like, like your biggest, you wouldn't. My, my biggest influence? Your biggest influence. So, like, when you sit back and think about it, like, yo, who influenced you? All right, let's talk about music first. So, who influenced you to be, besides your pops, but who is your biggest influence in music when you sit back I mean, and think about definitely it? Definitely Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Definitely, like, DJ Battle Cash, Screw, DJ Screw, Man Future, Gucci. You giving me too many artists, bro. Yeah, like, I, 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 <laughs> I'm like many? all of them in one. Like, all right, who's your biggest influ influence in general? That I say, Dr. Dre, because like he came out like with his own everything. Like, you know? I feel like he has his own frequency. And he was an entrepreneur. Yeah, like you know, he he tied every he tied everything into one. Yep, I feel like he's definitely my biggest inspiration. Like. Just the way he is, and he always wears all black too, like me. I don't know, man. It's definitely Dr. Dre, I'll say. That's dope. That's dope. Overall, man. Because, like, he cares about, you know, the Sonics. He cares about everything. He's very And intricate. he could make, like, a dude that's in the corner, he can turn him into a superstar. He has that influence. Yeah, like, you know? And I know uh, I know a lot of people that have been in the studio with me, they're like, yo, you really bring out the... The best of the people. artist in me, so like mm -hmm. I feel like that's like my inner Dr. Dre. Uh, so, yeah. If you were to have a feature with anybody, would it be him? A feature? Not a feature, but if you if you had the chance to make music with somebody in the industry, who who would be your who would be who would be the first? The first person I'll call? Damn, I don't know. If you if if somebody was like, yo bro, your magic card is like, yo bro, Wiz, I got you, bro. You literally get to call anybody in the industry right now to make a track with, to produce yeah. with, to do anything with. Who are you calling? And you can't pick people up from the dead. Um, Who's living right now? I'd say Timberland. Timberland? Yeah. That's different. Yeah, I'd definitely say Timberland. Why is that? Man, he stay creative, man. He's super creative. He makes his own drums, makes everything like... I've never heard I, that. I feel like me and him like really connect and I don't even know him. Like just watching him, I definitely like I feel like me and him can make some fucking hits. Fire tracks. Oh yeah. Definitely to play. Can you give the audience though? Can you give the audience like your process? I mean I don't know if you wanna do it. No, no, I, I, like give them like a little bit of your process of how you make your music. <coughs> like do you like do you think about something first? Like like how like what's your process with doing it? I mean, I'm a producer at first, so... Uh, so you make the beat? I just make beats. I make beats all day, like... I probably make, like, 30 beats a day. Damn. So, like... It's just one beat. Like, one beat will just click in me, and I'll just, like... I'll just start mumbling. And once you... And, and once, like, I get, like, a good flow, I'll be like, all right. And I'll just grab my phone. Copy. The voice note, record it. And then when I, when I get to the studio, I start putting words to the little shit I mumbled and it becomes a song next thing. So you basically, so you grab your voice, your phone, mm -hmm. you voice note it, you mumble, and then you put words to it. Yep. Basically, that's what I do. But it's, oh, it all starts off with the beat, always. When I make it a beat. So you gotta get a beat from me, you heard? Yeah, you gotta get some beats from me, man. I got a deal going on, $100 a beat. That's, uh, for, that's for the city, you know, to help out the city who really don't got that bag. No. Hundred dollars a beat. So I'm playing for now. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Till the price goes yeah, up, you heard? <laughs> so who else have you met from the industry? You didn't even tell us. I Talk met I met Meek Mill. Meek Millie. Yes. Shout out Meek Mill. Come on the podcast. I met yeah, come through Meek. <laughs> I met him um while he was recording the championships album. Oh damn. Yeah. That's dope. Um it was like I forgot what time it was, but we we came from here. No, we saw um, we were watching a boxing fight, and then from there we left to New York. 
Like literally like that. Said, Fuck just it. like that. It was like two in the morning. No, it was like I forgot. It was like nine, man. and we got to New York like two in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know. We just got in the studio, and I'm, I see the studio. I'm just like, what the fuck? It has like Louis Vuitton walls. I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? In New York? Yeah. There's like 1942 bottles, Ace of Spades everywhere. I was like, yo, this is real rapper shit. <laughs> and then this nigga comes out the booth. I'm like, oh, it's me. Oh, let's, tall? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, he's super tall. He's a little taller than me. And I'm 6'3". Um, yeah, I mean, me, he's like one of the humblest persons I met. Um, yeah, he was recording um, the championship shit. And I was just like, yo, this is what it, this is what album mode really is. Like, like he was like just he was tunnel like vision. Focus, yeah, like a fro and everything. He was like, he looked like a, he, he, he looked like he, he, looked he, looked like, he looked like he was there for like five months straight. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, this is what really album mode really is, man. I, I never got to experience like the real industry album mode. I'd be, be doing my album mode. They be out of the element, right? Yeah, they're just there, just zoned out. And the speakers there is just like retarded loud. It's just like, I was like, yo, I'm in heaven. And I was just like, just soaking everything in. I was just watching, observing. I met Cruz, his engineer, he's a fire engineer. Oh. Yeah, man. So you can really see yourself doing this for the rest of your life. Oh yeah. Like this is just, whiz, whiz and music is just synonymous. Man, nah, it's like that's a, it, I like a lot of people be like, yo, like I don't know how you're doing, but I just it's just like a part of me. Exactly. It's yeah. like a part of me, like period. Like, that's the thing that's you were like, talking about earlier, the passion. Yeah, it's like that's just me. Like I, I can't go a day without doing nothing that has to do with music. Like I can't, I cannot make like one beat. I have to make like at least one at least one beat. At least one beat. And um. Yeah, music is everything. That's, that's what like, real passion is, bro. That's like drinking water to me, you know. Like you have to drink water, I have to do something with music. Uh, at least once a day. Like, music is everything. There's no where's the code without music. I can literally be a bum. No music I can literally be a code. bum. I can literally be a bum <laughs> outside making beats. I'll be fine. That's crazy. Where's the coda? It's good, man. <laughs> Get spicy. Making your music. Go get spicy. <laughs> we'll get a little spicy on you. Feel me? But you're making your music, you're doing your thing. Not spicy yet though. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm asking a little some other questions first. Alright. So where do you see yourself in like five years? Like where do you see yourself? I see myself Where's the code of the brand? I see myself being one of the greatest greatest to, to ever do anything that's doing music. So in twenty twenty five you're the greatest. Yeah. Have like He's giving you the timeline. I'm gonna have like <laughs> at least, at least minimum 20 platinum plaques. 20 platinum, damn. <laughs> at least. I'll be here, bro. Remember where you came from, bro. Minimum, of course. Overall Drip Experience podcast. <laughs> minimum 20 plaques, platinum. In, in five years, definitely. That's dope. That's 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 the confidence we like to hear on this show, though, to be <laughs> honest. So tell me, bro. You know, you got the features. <laughs> You got the the wild girl, you got the bar, you got the clout. Allegedly. How, uh, allegedly, yeah, yeah. It's all it's all a myth, but the shorties, the groupies, talk to you. Man, to be honest, you don't get no groupies. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who gets groupies don't get no groupies, bro. I mean, if if it's girls hitting me up, they either trying to get in for free my shows or like. You, you know, tell me when you're around, they're not like. What? They don't. They don't care about rappers. They don't care about musicians. What, bro? They, yo, he's Kevin, bro. They don't care about. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a bottle cap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna throw a bottle cap at the screen, bro. Yo, you got a bottle. Cap. Nah, no cap, man. It's facts. You ain't tell me the, what. So they only care about drug dealers. They care about you know, the niggas that stand on top of the couches, ah, buy them bottles, and fly them out. I ain't flying no girl out. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> but I'm telling you, but you have um, you have to notice when like people are around you. Like you have to notice the difference. No, it, it's, no def- it's definitely an energy around. They just be like, yo, that's Wiz. Oh shit, that's Wiz. Oh shit, like. And it's definitely hard to tell who's real or fake. You, you. I mean, I could sort of sense it when people like you know trying to take advantage. But it's like there's nothing I could do. I just no spread love always. Spread love. Fuck with that. That's dope. Who's who's the one person that like the one like music head or the one artist or whatever that stands out to you in Boston? 
Um, my, the my boy Millie's man. That's like Millie. That's my brother right there. Millie's. He's a white boy. He's fire. Side to Jada. Oh, hot night. Oh, yeah, he, he did, did the hot night seven. Ah, uh, fire. He's the, He shows me a lot of love. My man DJ E Double. E Double. That's the jamming. Those people, they 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 on my side heavy. They support me to Respect. the max. And That's the dope. Smash Brothers, Super Smash Bros. They throw the events, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're, we have I have a whole um, EP with them. They make music too. Yeah, they they're producers, DJs. They they really into the music, hands on. That's dope. Alright, so bro, I'm gonna play a little game with you, bro. Let's get it. Game is simple. I'm gonna say a word, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when mm -hmm. I say the word. Got it? Yeah. Simple. Procrastination. Me. <laughs> <laughs> music. Me. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You can't say the same word, though. You can't say the same I word. I am music. <laughs> music is great. Music is great. All right, so great. Copy. Confidence. Confidence is awesome. Awesome. All right. <laughs> Lawrence. Forever. Nine seven eight forever. <laughs> you can't see the same one. <laughs> Lawrence number four ever. Uh, the other one is F O R. Ah, copy, copy. There you go. <laughs> oh, the overall drip experience podcast is the future. <laughs> all right, bro. That's basically all I got for you, brother. We here with Wiz. It's Bash and Drip, the flyest in the city. Yeah. It's Wiz Dakota, the hottest in the city. And we out. <laughs>